All right, guys, we are pulling back home from a little trip, and I think I broke my brakes. The pedal seems good. Let's check this. Uh, let's check this parking brake. Pop it in neutral. Oh, oh yep. There is absolutely no grip on this thing whatsoever. On um, and rolling. Oh yeah. That's a problem. I broke my e-brake. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Oh, we got a beautiful day, thank God. I am so happy that I don't have to wear three layers of sweatshirts to be outside. Got a t-shirt on, that's how gorgeous it is. First time it's been above freezing in, in a long, long time. So, uh, I took a little trip in the Grievous to pick up some items for my WJ. There we go, I got some nice black leather seats going on over here and um, I had to go to New Jersey, I went out of state for them, and well, uh, had a little problem on the way home. So uh, got stuck in some New York City traffic, kind of stop and go, and uh, got a big head of steam going into one turn under an overpass, and oh, sorry, light's bad. Uh, <laughs> I get under this overpass into a turn, and traffic is stopped dead. So I locked up the brakes on the Grievous. I turned onto the shoulder of the road, went up into the grass a little bit. I avoided a collision, thankfully, but um, something didn't feel right with the brakes afterwards. Actually, I started to smell a burny, brake pad, clutchy smell the rest of the ride home. And well, as you can see, I think I broke my e-brake. Now, I have all the parts I need to fix whatever's wrong on the brakes, because, well, I never got around to doing my disc brake swap on my XJ. So I got a whole box full of ZJ to XJ brake parts. So I'm thinking I'll just use what I got right here and then I'll replenish all these parts for my ZJ to XJ rear disc swap in the future. So that'll come soon. This will come now. Let's take a look at the general and we'll see what's going on with it. It is no surprise here, these brakes are shot. Now, I don't think that these rear brakes did anything at all. Look at these rotors, they are deeply grooved and junky. <laughs> there is absolutely no wear on the inside of this rotor. Now this is where the brake shoes are supposed to rub for the parking brake or emergency brake. And as you can see here, there is absolutely no pad on this whatsoever. So this e-brake was useless here. Um, and here are the brake pads on this caliper. And there, again, is nothing there. Wow, terrible. But I did have this Jeep for about two years and I haven't touched the brake, so that's what you get. And here we go, here is the driver's side. This rotor is equally worn. Um, these brake pads are <laughs> equally as worn. Obviously no surprise there. And check out the park brake shoes. This is, uh, this just kind of fell out. And you can see some fresh wear on here. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that this is what was rubbing. Yeah, you can see some fresh rubs. It's very smooth right there. No doubt in my mind that this is what was causing that stink when I locked up the brakes. I'm sure the last bit of this just crumbled off and started rubbing. So yeah, I guess it is time. We will utilize my XJ disc brake swap parts and we'll just replenish those. And at least we'll have a running ZJ brake set. All right, let's get to fixing. All right, here's our new parts. 
all ready to go. I'm not going to put on the backing plate, obviously. I don't want to take off the axle, but uh, we're just going to use the park brake pads, all these gadgets and gizmos, the springs and adjusters. They're going to go on and uh, not swap in the calipers, but I will use these nice new brake pads. It's all power stop parts, and I will put the link in the description for all these things that you could replace on your ZJ and as well as convert on your XJ. So these are really nice, pretty beefy rotors. And uh, the only thing I'm gonna do first is just make sure that the, um, the parking brake cables are good. So I'll put this doodad on this mount and I will hit the brake lever and then I'll review the footage and continue on as needed. All right, something definitely happened when I pulled on the e-brake lever. Things moved around, so I know that it is connected, it works, and we can always adjust the tension later. So I'm just going to take apart these parking brake shoes right now. And, uh, yeah, just going to try to get this clip off. Jimmy this little lock out of here. And then uh, it should just kind of crumble in my hands because they are decrepit. Disconnect the spring. Oh, there goes the adjuster. There we go. There's one more clip back here. Yucky. And all right guys, although the brakes were completely demolished, I'm not too disgusted with this overall setup. I mean, this, this whole uh, e-brake lever mechanism, this is actually really good condition. It moves freely, it's not seized up at all compared to this setup. <laughs> when I refurbished this, that was just uh, really caked on. So, um, all right, this moves nice and freely. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach the new parking shoes. There we go. Nice. All right. The new parking shoes are on. Springs are in. Clips are on. We even got the adjuster in there at the bottom. Um, now, I'm just going to test fit the rotor. Make sure this goes on nice. And we are rubbing just a little bit, so I'm going to back off the adjuster just a tad. There we go. Very nice. Ah, oh, there we go. E-brake engaged. This is going to be sweet. And now, brake parts cleaner. Oh yeah. I want these shoes nice and clean. Oil and grease free. Now, <laughs> a lot of you guys mentioned that I used way too much grease and anti-seize when I built these brakes and uh, you're probably right but I have a ton of rust where I live salty beaches salty roads in the winter always salt in the air and everything rusts up here in the northeast so I'd rather take my chances 
with a little extra grease and maybe some dirt build up and break dust build up than having everything rot to pieces. So that's it. Here we go. This is the final look at the e-brake park brake shoes and all the adjustments. If you want a better shot at this, go check out my video on how to prepare these disc brakes for the XJ ZJ Swaparoo, <laughs> and you'll get a better idea of how all this stuff goes together outside the vehicle. I know this axle's in the way. So, this is good. I'm gonna clean up this rotor, put this on, and then we'll move over to the caliper. take a look at this oh man these brakes are shot gross brake pads it's only a matter of time <laughs> these things are shot Ooh! wow sorry to grievous <laughs> I haven't looked at these brakes since the whole time I had this vehicle. Oh boy. So all right, I'm just gonna leave this inside one on for a minute, just so I can punch this piston right back inside the caliper and uh, make it easier to fit the caliper over nice fresh meat on the new brake pads. Now we're just gonna open up this brake reservoir relieve any pressure so we're crushing that piston in nothing pops over here so that's open we'll let all the juices flow back up now let's examine this caliper i know it looks like crap but everything in here seems to be functioning just fine uh which is quite surprising these pins they move nice and freely and then normally you just pop these out and clean them up but uh this phenolic piston, there's no chunks missing. Everything looks great. It moved in and out nice and freely. Uh, the banjo boat is definitely crusty, but it's not leaking. So despite the grime, it actually looks pretty good. And even the bleeder valve looks really good. So I'm just gonna pop on the new brake pads and then we're good to go. Hopefully it's the same story for the other side. <laughs> look at the comparison in these pads guys oh my goodness look at this meat it's like steak here and this is like uh strips of bologna <laughs> nothing left of it all right let's go add our filet mignons back to this jeep oh my goodness we're gonna pull our little sliding pins back so they don't interfere and we're gonna clip these on. <laughs> you might wanna situate your lower pin before you go ahead and click that in because this little shock is in the way, whatever. Minor adjustments. All right guys, everything is installed nice and neat. I just wanna wanna make sure that you clean this rotor down very well and get all that junk out of the brake pads. Want this as clean as possible. Use a fresh paper towel, wipe it all down, and we're good to go. All right guys, the passenger side came out great. Now I'm gonna jump into the bushes and through the driver's side. I'll probably just time lapse this thing because nothing special going on here, except for the fact that I'll be working in some foliage. A shrubbery! So um, I'll fast forward through this thing and I'll stop if I run into any problems that you guys should know about. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Driver's side, baby. All right, well, I don't think that was recording. So I'm just gonna show you what I did here. Again, this is on nice and neat. And when I do the bottom springs first, kind of has a tendency to want to pull everything down. So you're going to want to make sure that you get up under here, not from the brake pad, but from this metal part. You can pry this out and up. So these tabs sit just above this little nub for the, uh, the park and brake. So everything is sitting where it's supposed to be. I'm going to clean these things up and put on the rotor. A 
Oh yeah, way too tight. Gotta loosen these back up. See that? That has a tendency to wanna fall off this mount. So, little adjustments and you'll get it. There we go. Free as a bird. All right, guys, here they are looking good. And just a couple final thoughts. Uh, if you have to replace your calipers, just make sure that the bleeder is always up. That's how you know you got the right side. The bleeder is on the top side. So all the air bubbles get to get out. And of course, you're gonna have to bleed the brakes if you unconnect or disconnect any of these brake lines. And yeah, that's it. Uh, not gonna bleed them because I didn't unplug anything. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna do the front really quick and then we'll uh, we'll test this baby out. So we get these wheels on. Oh yeah, and one more thing. If you don't have enough tension on your parking brake, you can always get to that little star right in here and you could flick it with a screwdriver until it tightens up a bit. And there's also, let's see if you can see it from here, there's the zoom, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. There's a little adjustment screw right, right up there. You could tighten that little rod down and that'll pull both e-brake cables at the same time. That way you could get more tension. <laughs> now that I could see this thing, I might spray this with WD-40, lube up the cables a bit. Yeah. And of course, guys, before you do any driving, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your brake reservoir is topped off and the cap is returned nice and firm. All right, let's go for a little ride. All right, guys, here we go. Let's test some stuff out. Definitely gotta pump up the brakes a little bit. Get some pressure back in there. You're gonna to wanna to expand the good old pistons right to where they need to be before they stop. A couple pumps should do you. Feeling nice and firm. All right, let's give a little reverse. We're rolling. And apply some e-brake. Yep. We're gonna go in there and adjust them. All right, so I'm gonna revisit this little window and flick that adjuster screw up to tighten it. And in case you need some reference, you could just go ahead and use your old one. We spin this, it expands. This way you're not guessing around under here for hours. So I know I need to flick this one up and then I will have tightness, tautness, more taut, Tighted. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Dan. So this side, the adjuster is situated in this orientation. And once again, I'm going to have to flick this thing upwards so I can expand the little adjuster and get some more tension on this. And I did about 10 turns. Well, not 10 full turns, I guess 10 little notches, which might be about a full turn. So I'm gonna try to do the same thing on this side, keep everything even. All right, I think it's tightened, tauted. <laughs> All right, whatever, let's give it a try. Oh, oh my, my, holy smokes. Oh, geez. Guys, look at this. 
new project look at that lower control arm oh my goodness we got some rot we will definitely be addressing this in the future and here we go guys here's something i haven't done in a while here are the products tools and supplies you will need for this job i always recommend safety gear definitely glasses when you're working on springs Gloves, you're going to need a means to remove the tire from the vehicle, whether it be your impact, your tire iron. You're going to need a jack, obviously. Maybe some jack stands, too. That's always a good idea. Mine are under a Dana 44 in the backyard, so I had to do without it. Uh, good old hammer to whack something off in case you need to. Highly recommend a ratcheting socket wrench thing. <laughs> These are great. Um, you're going to need some pliers of assorted varieties and sizes. Same thing with these little picks. These are great to have. You will need a C-clamp to compress your calipers, the products, good old WD-40 as usual. Um, a couple bottles of brake clean, that's always recommended. Gotta keep your parts nice and clean. And of course, you will need some brake equipment. I got new rotors, obviously. <laughs> rotors, the park brake assembly to include all the gadgets and gizmos, the springs and the clips and of course, brake pads. So I will leave a link in the description below for all of this stuff in case you guys need it. Let me know if you find this helpful and I'll try to remember to do this in more videos. All right guys, let's test this baby out. There we go, reverse. Brake on, indicated there. <laughs> it's up in gear and I'm not driving fantastic e-brake check <laughs> all right that is a wrap All right, guys, that's going to do it for my ZJ rear disc brake and parking brake repair project. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that I had all the parts I needed to fix this thing in a pinch right here in my garage. But unfortunately, I did have to take from my XJ supplies to do the ZJ to XJ rear disc brake conversion. No biggie, though. I'll just order some new stuff, and then we'll do that project when the new parts come. I was going to wait for warm weather anyway, so we'll just kick that can down the road a little bit more. I know it's coming, guys. I owe you. You've been waiting for so long. You've been very patient, so thank you for that. We're going to do a whole brake overhaul on that thing. It's going to be awesome. Trust me, that's in store for you guys. So um, when you drive this thing after you do the brakes, make sure you follow the specs of your manufacturer to do a proper disc brake break-in. There's a procedure, and um, it should specify that on the parts you buy. So uh, that being said... We got ourselves a nice good parking brake in this thing and uh, very grateful that everything is up and running on this again. And just one other thing guys, this, this is a parking brake. It is to be applied when you are parked. It'll keep you from rolling down a hill in, a, in an emergency situation. When this thing doesn't work, you will uh, save yourself with the parking brake. Uh, you don't want to apply this thing when you're moving. You will grind up that tiny little piece of brake. There's really nothing to it. Um, you're gonna want to make this thing last. Apply it when you're parked. You don't want want to hit this thing and go drifting. Well, maybe in the snow, but hopefully that cold weather and the snow is behind us. Looking forward to some nice weather and new project. So that's it, guys. Um, remember to like, subscribe, leave me in the comments stories of any crazy breaking emergencies you guys have had. Those are always fun. So let's get a discussion going. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys on the next project. Peace.